Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Magic and Miracles, where you learn how to be the magician of your life. My name is Anna, and I'm your most favorite manifestation coach under the sun. Reason why there's no such coaching program like my coaching program, and nobody but nobody spends as much time with their clients like I do. Two to three times per week, I run the world with all of my clients. Regardless of which means we correspond by, there's an update on my website, really quick. Parenthesis here all the information for me is below on my website. Um, I no longer coach with audio exchange, so I just decided to consolidate it to Zoom sessions and calls. The only variation is that you have the um, upgrade from that to the um, Zoom or session, a uh, Zoom or phone calls. Um, Deluxe, which means that in between the sessions, which are the mandatory three, um, in this case, a, a week, in between the sessions, the most hand-holding I can possibly offer is through emails, texts, and also if you need to reach out to me and record an audio of some kind, if you're going through a really rough time right now, this is for somebody like that and who needs that, you can also send me an audio, but it has to be five minutes max, okay? And so I left all the other packages such as um, bring your SP back in 30 days, that's one month only, and the magician course is one month only, okay? The rest is seminars, um, uh, five phone calls, as well as uh, the most recent edition, of course, Magic and Miracles audios, which, by the way, sign up. You're missing out. You're missing out. You're missing out terribly, okay? $350 it is right now. I will raise the price eventually um, to at least $500, if not more. It is basically a subscription to a book, Okay, that's how I would describe it. And it's a book I've been writing for over a year now. And it, in, in it, you get the goodies that you think my channel is like golden diamonds. Forget it. This, this time I really get to be myself 100%, you know, and I really do enjoy, did enjoy helping people and I do enjoy helping people with SP problems, etc. But this just cracks it up a notch and really puts the focus on you which is the whole situation anyway. Okay, the reason I'm recording this audio in between my calls and meetings is because I wanted to share a success story. And um, most of my clients, you know, really value and treasure their anonymity. And of course, everything is confidential in my coaching. As you know, it's part of the clause, um, one of the clauses um um, my coaching agreement states that everything's confidential unless you become a danger to yourself or to me. Um, and so in that case, I'm, you know, I, I'm uh, obligated to report it to the uh, authorities, etc. So in this case, I was allowed to share the story. Um, and of course, no names will be mentioned. Um, I was allowed to share what, what I was allowed to share. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, and do it. So I didn't really know what to title it because there's so many things going on in the story. Uh, but I titled it um, The Success Story of an Apology. Okay, Essentially, what we have here is a mother of two. Um, she was in a marriage um, for a very long time with, with a very wealthy person, actually here in New York. Okay, So I was allowed to share this much. And a uh, very wealthy man, uh, a banker, um, and everything seemed to be going fine until one day he announced to her that he's leaving her, okay, for um, a younger woman, uh, was really unapologetic about it, and like most people who haven't really done any coaching or any self-examination, any deep work, it came as a surprise, but in our, in our coaching, which, of which she, she's been with me for six months, she still is in my coaching, um, we had a lot to work through. And in that, she realized that this was no surprise whatsoever, that she had insecurities, that she had fears. Um, she does not come from a wealthy, per, um, wealthy family. And with that, she had some insecurities around it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and essentially, having looked back on it, their marriage, um, the last few years of their marriage, was full of resentment from her because more and more she grew um, aware of you know her husband's success and that she really was just a stay-at-home mom, et cetera, et cetera. Well, 
we changed quite a bit uh, in my coaching with her because once he left, um, they were in the middle of divorce and, and, you know, sorting things out. When she got into my coaching, it was already kind of being finalized. And why she got into my coaching was because he then decided that he was not going to put um, his children um, with her in his will. <laughs> so obviously the influence of the new woman was not healthy. Um, but, you know, I mean, she went as far as kind of like reach out to people who, you know, are like fortune tellers and tarot readers, all sorts of like people. And Actually, the way she got into my coaching was completely funny because her assistant showed her one of my videos. So she doesn't really watch uh, YouTube. One of um, her assistants showed her um, uh, one of my videos. And so she decided to take a chance. And I explained to her, look, I think the problem is not with the woman. I think the problem is, is that you resent. And of course, once he decided not to include them in the will, she, you know, her resentment went through the roof. And I said to her, look, you obviously had already a lot of resentment with him going into the situation. And now it's just piling on. And it's not so much about the, um, the other woman or what's going on. It's about you. We need to redo you. And so without going into specifics, she became, you know, part of charities. She became an organizer. She started her own, um, you know, company where she helps people. I'm not going to mention which area. Okay. But she basically became involved and has her own thing, makes her own money now. But the thing is that mostly was our work, um, was around resentment. Okay. So we worked through that, um, for a long time and we went through her history, which I do with everybody in my coaching and we unpacked quite a bit, really, there was a lot. And so what she started to, started to realize really is that this was not about anybody. This was not about the other woman. This is just a creation of her consciousness that came in and started taking things away from her based on the resentment that she wasn't doing enough with her life, based on the resentment that she was inadequate, perhaps, in people's eyes when they would go to parties and there were all these other wives um, and, and perhaps girlfriends that were achieving more, etc. And to her, it became clear that she was really the answer behind the situation. And it took her a long time, okay? Resentment is not easy to, to get over, especially when children are involved. And we, we did a bunch of exercises, which, you know, I employ in my coaching, etc. But at some point, she started to really feel grateful for this experience. And this is not easy to arrive to this, but it is possible. And she became completely, um, she wasn't resentful so much for the situation. She became grateful because of the people she started to meet through her work, because of the amount of fun she was having, the pleasure of helping people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, even her children's mood changed because they were really kind of sad and, you know, distraught with the situation, obviously. The dad wasn't around, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and basically what had happened was that she stopped feeling re so resentful and the things between her and her now ex-husband started to get better. He would call her up and say, do you have everything? Is there anything I can do? And she would first, you know, she would talk to me and she said, what should I reply? Well, I said, just talk to him. If you need anything, just say, if you need anything, I don't know. <laughs> and, um, you know, there were some things, whatever, with some, what, some other things with her children and this and that. And I, I just said to her, don't bring, the, don't bring the will up, okay? Let him do it to you. Let him apologize for his shitty behavior. Let him make it up to you for all of this. You just stay put, stay calm, be polite, be civil, etc. And just understand that you've let go of a lot of bricks here. You've let go of a lot of resentment and just keep keep at it. And so eventually something happened between um, 
the um, the new woman and this guy, um, and they started having problems essentially. Okay, so he the 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 ex husband started reaching out to my client <laughs> essentially for um, for advice, believe it or not, to hear him out to kind of like whine about her essentially, and my client it took every <laughs> bit of patience in her to be very, you know, poised about it. But she said, no, I'm very sorry this is happening, but, you know, I'm sure it'll work out, something like that. And in the back of her mind, she was thinking, ah, karma, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> she was having a great time, I won't lie. <laughs> anyway, um, she actually met somebody in the middle of all of this. She met somebody through her work, um, also another banker. <laughs> what can I say? She likes bankers. Um, and um, essentially, they, were, you know, they had a couple of dates, etc. But what happened with the ex-husband was completely miraculous. At some point, this was like just recently, okay, um, two weeks ago, something like this. Um, he said, you know, could we please meet? I really want to meet with you and I really w would like to talk to you face to face because I don't think this is a phone call. I don't think this is a text message, etc. And mind you, parenthesis here, they're already like, so this guy is already living with this other woman in a, you know, this fancy place that they bought together and all this fucking jazz, right? It's too quick, but whatever. And so my client goes, well, fine what what does it have to do with so that i i know what we're talking about and he said no don't worry about it i just really would like to um talk to you face to face all right so they meet face to face and essentially he does apologize to her and essentially begs her to forgive him and take him back okay <laughs> Now my client called me right back, like after the, the meeting or whatever. Um, and he and she says, "What do you think I should do?" And I'm like, "What do you What do you think that you should do? Because it's your decision ultimately." And she said, "You know, I don't really feel like I want him back, because you know, I'm I'm just kind of over it. I really like this new guy, and I think I really want a new life and all these things. And I'm not so upset anymore about any of this. And I think this was needed for me to rediscover myself. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So this is in six months, mind you, right? So she's still with me and all this stuff. But the thing is, six months is really like a minuscule amount of time to to have achieved this kind of fucking turnaround not to brag but I'm just saying she did take my advice there was that obviously you have to and so essentially um what I want to you know point out here is that you might change your mind after you become a new person and that's okay all right she's still kind of thinking about it I mean obviously they've been together for a long time and this and that obviously he put the children in the will and everything got arranged the way that she wanted to um he's even giving her more money per month and all this kind of stuff even though she doesn't even need it anymore essentially he made it up to her he even bought her a, a brand new ring okay like if she'll take him back whatever um, they will get married and the ring is hers anyway. But if, if they'll get married, you know, this will be, um, you know, basically the new engagement ring. But the ring is hers anyway, in any case, right? This was like an apology ring. And she, you know, she told me, I, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I, I don't think so, though. You know, it's nice to have the ring and all these kinds of stuff, but it's more important to have me, you know, back to what I really wanted to be. And so the moral of the story is, is that don't focus so much on your SP. Yes, it's dreadful sometimes the situations that you go through. But I think the point here is more to focus on yourself. And the SP is always a reminder of what you've got going on inside. And if you want to make a change in anybody in your reality, you've got to make a change on the inside of yourself. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this helps somebody and inspires somebody. All the information for me again is below. Until next time. Ciao, ciao.